All right. Let's jump on. Let's jump on into Riven Vi, huh? So, um, Vi, very mid rangey controlling champion that sometimes has an aggressive punch, has challenger and tough to allow you to dictate what's going on in the board. Whenever she's in play or in your hand and you play a card, she gets plus one attack, and then she levels when she strikes for 10 plus damage. Her leveled mode is a lot more aggressive and helps you close games out. Whenever she strikes units, she deals five damage to the enemy nexus. So, Vi does have some reasonable synergy with um with the reforge cards the reforge mechanic a new one here that creates these blade fragments into eventually having a blade to exile and that's notably good with Vi because a card like rune weaver for instance rune weaver plus the blade fragment that rune weaver generates is technically two played cards for Vi also the blade fragments can give overwhelm or quick attack, which synergize very well with what Vi is doing, allowing you to either push damage or keep Vi alive when hooking into larger blockers. Riven, kind of the reforge payoff card in the deck. So 3-4 for 3, reforges every time we get the attack token, and then levels when she sees that blade of exile get created. And then her leveled mode here, the first time her power gets increased in a turn, it gets twice as much instead. So when you put that Blade of Exile onto Riven, it turns Riven into an 8-5 overwhelm quick attack unit that's going to crunch games out pretty quickly. Um, the rest of this deck is kind of just good PNZ cards that help us sculpt our hand and our game plan. Ballistic Bot creating an ignition for us every single turn works very well with cards like Rummage as well as uh, Sump Treasure here to kind of filter through our deck. And then effects like Might and Whirling Death can allow us to kind of pseudo combo kill with Vi in a way. So if you have Vi and at least, uh, what is it? She gets four extra. So if you have her at at least six attack and you attack with six mana, you can might into Whirling Death to give Vi Overwhelm, level her up, and then get to strike immediately and deal another five damage. So Vi paired with Whirling Death and Might can kind of uh, deal a very large burst of damage out of, out of nowhere when your opponent's not expecting it. So let's go ahead and dive on into dive on into some games with this and uh, see how it goes. Serzo, thanks for the 31. Thanks for the read. I appreciate that. Hope you had a good stream. Grappler is 32. He definitely does not look 32. Whereas I, I am, I am going to be 30 in a week and I could, I could easily pass for 40 plus probably. I've got big old man energy though. I've been an angry old man for a long time. I think I'm full mulliganing here. Looking for cheaper cards to start. Yeah, in a, in a way this deck's like a uh, Lee sin S combo with a little bit more setup work. Vi, Vi in the opener effectively is really good here. Um, I could play House Spider to push damage, but getting Ballistic Bot set up to start generating extra cards so we could rummage also sounds appealing. Ballistic Bot's Ignitions, in a way, synergize well with Vi as well, giving us cheap cards to play to work towards leveling her up. And then with this play here, I'm probably going to get Excited the Goat when they open attacks here, discarding the Ignition. The uh, career before streaming and then having having a house and two kids definitely gives me old man energy as well. And we've got we've got five whirling death might set up here. We could we could see what I was talking about during the deck tech happened on turn six this game. We're attacking on evens. I'm gonna rummage ditching the ignition and the rummage here. Safety 
So, the ratio of money I've spent on Rune Terra compared to Magic isn't a 100% fair comparison because Riot actually supports their content creators. So, like, while I spent some money on Rune Terra this year, the last couple of expansions I didn't have to spend anything because Riot hooked me up with wild cards once I was producing content consistently. It's also, it's also not a strictly straight comparison because a higher percentage of the money I've spent on Rune Terra has gone into um, cosmetics compared to Magic the Gathering, where most of it goes into actually getting game pieces to play. Well, Bert, thanks for the 25 months. I do, I do have a spreadsheet, though. What was it? I spent uh, $426 on Rune Terra stuff this year. And I spent $1,115 on Magic Arena stuff this year. So again, take take that with a small, small grain of whatever because of the context that Riot supports the people. Yeah, maybe maybe that get excited was wrong and I was supposed to just get set up to try and combo them next turn by playing Vi this turn into these two. Even if I bank three spell mana here, I'm only going to go up to six total mana next turn, so I only have four left over after Vi. Feels bad, man. I think I think I messed this up. Nope, the audio is definitely different than normal. I have uh, I have a new microphone today than what I've used previously. Spent spent last night futzing with uh with a bunch of stuff. I mean, to be to be fair, Sky Zero runs the world. Like the successful Magic content creators are making way more money than they're spending on Arena. Like people like myself, Crokies, Caleb Durward, Saffron Olive, like all of all of those big creators, we made far more money than we spent on Magic Arena. Like even even with the the off the offset cost of Rune Terra being less to even with Rune Terra being literally free for me to play with Riot providing support, like I still make far less money in terms of net doing Rune Terra content compared to Magic. Well, we do at least get to vie into this this turn, which is nice. Even if they gem this, it still dies. Okay, and then now, with this leveled, even if they kill this Vi, my next Vi will still be leveled, which is great. We can survive this turn on the back of Whirling Death. We should be okay here. Why do you think Magic has such high viewership? Because it's existed for 25 years. And, like, I also spent, you know, I've only been making Rune Terra content for six months. Like, I've been, stre I've been streaming Magic for seven years. It takes it takes a while to build to build a base up and part of part of why i've moved to rune terra is because not only do i enjoy it more but i think i think it's very reasonable to expect this game to grow it's a very good game so taking taking a bit of a loss for my sanity in the short term i think uh i think we'll have potentially a benefit long term if you look at if you look at the top rune terra content producers people like swim and mogwai like the types of numbers they they hit consistently are very comparable or even better than some of the top magic magic creators so there's there's an audience there it just takes a while to get things around i mentioned i mentioned this yesterday but december so i've been doing primarily rune terra content for three months now and it's looking like december will be the first month since i stopped doing magic that i actually gained followers on twitch for the year on the for the month which is sweet for for september or for october and november i had more people unfollow the channel that i gained in th than i gained in new followers 
think I just press okay here? Or am I supposed to whirling death into a notify? I feel like I press okay, we can get a pale cascade out of them. Their deck also doesn't really have a traditional form of reach. Yeah, and that's why, you know, people were talking about, like, Runeterra and their esports plans. Like, there's... They really haven't even started scaling up esports stuff yet in Runeterra. And once they do, like, I, I'm sure part of the reason why I picked up more followers this month than the previous months is related to the fact that Riot had their first seasonal tournament and I, had the, I got the opportunity to cast for that. I think I give this up and just go ahead and bank the spell mana this turn so I can have the most options next turn. We can dodge a hush, we can dodge a ball. We've been very bad at dodging hush so far today, though. Yeah, yeah, things like things like Bricky's video too was great. The other thing I got an opportunity to be a part of. Honestly, I think we're just attacking with everything here, right? How is my sub card trending? Sub count is always a very volatile metric. Like, even, even when I was streaming Magic, like, I averaged, like, 2,600 subs per month doing Magic, but, like, the swings could be, like, under 2,000 to over 3,000 month to month, depending on what was going on. Like, this month is high, for example, because a bunch of Hoaglandians uh, gifted a bunch of subs. Drawing Hush seems really powerful. I would I would be better if I could draw Hush more consistently. You're not wrong. That being said, they're still dead here. That doesn't save them, right? It gives them two more. Big, big negatives. I says they're dead. Click OK. <laughs> Good start here. Is there a website like MTG Goldfish that use the most decks? Yeah, Mobilytics. And in fact, it's much better than MTG Goldfish is for Magic because Mobilytics is actually data-driven as opposed to using artificially diversified data provided by Wizards of the Coast to make their formats look more diverse than they actually are. All of, all of the, almost all of the percentages on MTG Goldfish are bullshit. They use, they use data that's made artificially diverse and bad by Wizards of the Coast because Wizards doesn't manage their formats appropriately, so they have to hide a lot of information to show how truly terrible it is. I'm going to keep Rummage with Chump Wump here, Mulligan these, looking for ones and twos. The mobile, the mobile Linux list is incredibly large sample sizes for a lot of their games. They show you the sample sizes on them so you can judge what good sample sizes are for yourself. And a lot of the data in there comes from API data provided directly from Riot about what's being played on the ladder. Meat bags. That's true. You can also see deck lists in the client itself, which is lovely. Can't believe it's been two years, but I'm watching since the arena times. I would like to thank you for providing high quality entertainment, political integrity during a troubling year, both globally and personally for me. Hope 2021 turns up better for you, Cypress. Thank you for the two years. Really appreciate it. Sweet, yeah, yeah. The the mobilitic stuff for for Rune Terror is also also good. Just have to take this in here. There are actually many people who don't play Rune Terror because it looks like a cartoon compared to other card games. Sure, but that's that's true about every every type of card game. Like that's that's true of every type of game in general. Like the IP and what games look like 
turn people on or off all the time, and that's super subjective. I think the difference is Watsi hides data because their hands are tied to IRGs. Okay, guess. Okay, Tab. Tab here's. I'm gonna tell you a dirty little secret. As a consumer, I don't give a shit why Wizards of the Coast Horse and Buggy is having a hard time keeping up with the sports car that is Runeterra. The end of the day, I don't give a shit if there's reasons why they can't manage their game properly. You wanna, you wanna know the the real, you wanna know the real reason why Wizards of the Coast doesn't manage their game properly? It's not because their hands are tied due to paper. Wizards of the Coast doesn't manage their game properly because they're not balancing a card game. They're balancing loot boxes that they're selling to people they're interested in fleecing for money because they have a gambling problem. The reason, the reason why Wizards doesn't aggressively manage their formats is because they're balancing their checkbook and trying to minimize and maximize the amount of value their customers get out of their gambling booster packs. I wasn't defending Wizards of the Coast, Jeff. I was just repeating the silly FUD that I've heard repeated on Reddit and all these other places, even though it's bullshit and there's no basis in reality for it. I'm not saying it was aliens, Jeff, but it was fucking aliens. Whirling Death beats Pale Cascade here. That's probably a, a shot I'm interested in taking. They have Deny or Bastion. I'm a little bit sad. They have Notify too. Ooh, that's a blowout. So this has to be battling. So this stuns it away so I don't get to Whirling Death. Yeah, I mean, like, profits, profits over everything else is Wizards' number one goal. And, like, while all these companies want profits, Wizards actually... Exp the, the explicit verbiage in the Wizards shareholder yearly meeting in 2017 was that they intended to double the profits that Wizards of the Coast made as a company every year between 2018 and 2023. That's why they're making an incredibly number of short, incredible number of short-sighted decisions that sacrifice long-term stability for short-term games. And like again, for people that haven't heard me talk about this before, don't get me wrong, Wizards of or Riot Games definitely isn't making games out of the kindness of their heart. They also, they also want our money. They, they, they make games because it's profitable for them to make games. But in my opinion, the decisions Riot has made with Rune Terra specifically so far seem to indicate to me that Riot understands their focus should be on making a quality product and then the profits will follow because their product is good as opposed to instead trying to just make a bunch of quick small cash grabs. Riot. Riot's decided that doing a number of consumer-friendly things, such as largely monetizing their game via cosmetics instead of monetizing via gambling and loot boxes, is, is what they would like to be doing. Which is great. I'm glad. I'm glad. I really hope Runeterra finds a foothold to make success because it would be good for consumers if that happened. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree, Violet Journey. It's it's short it's short sighted versus not long term versus short term. Right, it's Riot's decisions feel like they're making the best product possible because they're playing for the long game, whereas Wizards feels like they're trying to cash in as quickly as possible for the last two to three years. What does and more? And more means that I'm going to be streaming something else after this deck, but I haven't decided what exactly that something else is yet. It will either either be another Rune Terra deck or some more Final Fantasy VII, depending on depending on how I'm feeling. When will I find peace? Power. 
Man, do I try another Whirling Death play here? I feel like I want to try and murder murder her again. Yeah, I do. I do, AB. In fact, I'm someone... But the Final Fantasy VII remake is someone... I'm someone who had never played a Final Fantasy game before. And I've, I've really loved it. It could have been right to go in with the Mushroom Cloud here. Or with the with the Rummage. I could see that being, being correct. In terms of quality of story and quality of gameplay, Final Fantasy VII has been a lot of fun. If you enjoy single-player uh, story-driven games, I would recommend it. Yeah, in, in fact, after playing fi the Final Fantasy VII Remake, I've looked into a number of the other Final Fantasy games, and the types of gameplay the other Final Fantasy games have seems to be very different, and it doesn't look like something I'd enjoy. But they've, they've hit something very sweet with the with the VII Remake. So. Well, even if they have Lisa next turn, they don't have an Overwhelm card rolled up just yet. Yeah, I think people that are referencing the older Final Fantasy games, um, one, their graphics don't look nearly as good as the Final Fantasy VII Remake does, and two, the thing that's really sweet about Final Fantasy VII, it, the remake, is that it's got a really neat blend of turn-based and real-time combat that the older games definitely do not have. Just making an iAndroid here. Behold, meow! Meow! Start with this and see what we draw when we loot the mushroom. True graveyard, not just ephemeral stuff. I think a better, I think a better log of what's been played in a game would be nice to have in client, but like a true graveyard isn't a new feature. You're just asking for the game to be functionally different than it is now. I think, I think having a true graveyard as opposed to what we have now would actually be worse. It would make a number of strategies worse. And I like, I like the difference in play patterns coming from magic that Runeterra has. Are we just leveling Riven this turn? They have like stuns and hushes, which make that less exciting than it otherwise would be. Riven levels here.
harsh but fair. If they're not killing me next turn, that's like not that big of a deal. We could we could be dying to this Lisa in. If they have if they have overwhelm, we're just gonna die to the Lisa in. Never, never not getting combo killed by that Dorko, huh? Well, peep. Garen is all you are just mulliganing looking for some cheap units to start on. Yeah, perfect. So Ballistic Bot into Sumps a Great Curve gives us an addition to discard to this. How do I feel about Hush? I think cards like Hush are really important to exist in Runeterra. I think cards, cards like Hush are key to having meaningful counterplay in a lot of situations. Do I Sump into this to attack, or do I hold this for Plaza? Am I sad if they have Plaza next turn? Probably, because I really want to play Riven next turn. I'm gonna attack for one and see what they do. If they play, if they play Plaza, I want Aftershock. The, the problem with Hush, I think I just end here and burn their mana. The problem with making Hush burst speed or making Hush slow or fast speed is that you then can't respond to Hush with other burst speed combat tricks is an important distinction. Got rewarded for them having the plaza. Danced around it nicely there. They're a Garen deck, so I think I just go ahead and open attacks here before they can play their 5-5 out. And then probably going to sump churn through this, play second bot this turn. Yeah, there's the Garen. And Swain Victor can make a decent deck. Um, My experience with uh, Victor so far has definitely been that I prefer him in more aggressively slanted builds. And I feel I feel like Swain tends to lean towards something more controlling. Although Victor Victor Heimer felt okay. Heimer Heimer is kind of an aggressive slant in certain situations though. If they attack with this, I'm going to uh, block plus get excited. We do what is right. Try and keep him from leveling up. This may or may not be right. If they single combat here, they could level him still. So if they have a second Garen, he'll be leveled. Like, they could, like, single combat into here, play second leveled Garen. I think, I think this is our line to try and keep him from. If Garen dies while striking, he doesn't get to level up. He has to survive his second strike. Even a Sharp Sight here doesn't save him, because it'll be four plus three. So Sharp Sight and Pale Cascade are things we don't care about. We're going to see that that single combat play here. So I'm expecting them to have second gear in, in, in hand after this. I know we were talking about it previously, but for the folks still discussing Wizard of the Coast profit margins with various uh, products, can you take that to a DM? Appreciate you.
Yeah, Hush, Hush being fast would make Elusive much better, too. It's definitely, definitely true. Don't really want to attack into this. I think we're basically just getting set up to try and combo them at this point. With over Overwhelm on Vi. Pure, Purify versus Hush, the difference between Champion and anything is a big, a big difference. Huh. So they're burning five mana, I'm burning two. I'm kind of into this pass. I think that's fine, fine for us. I'm definitely going to be able to use the spell mana. So we'll turn this ignition plus this into a into some real cards with rubbish here potentially. They're going back up to 20, so ignitioning sooner doesn't really accomplish much. Get the soft pass for now. They're gonna attack. Just go ahead and trade these off. Get the board nice and clean. is mediocre into single combat they could combat here well i guess if they single combat here they don't get to gain life though right so that seems fine for me yeah getting getting a hush out on that when we have a vi we haven't leveled up is real really good for us i think uh the closest thing to a fast speed combat trick in this game is decisive maneuvers I believe. Well, quick attack. Okay, so we can Vi and then give her a quick attack. The scene. And then even if they have another hush here to beat this when i hook their thing i can give this the clap with get excited to not not lose by that's that's greedy as all get out Should there be a word for burst speed, not combat cards? I think there should be. I think it's kind of clunky. I I like the wording of can't be cast in combat or in response to a spell. I think from a game design perspective, this is very good, but it's very wordy and clunky that this is just included on a bunch of cards. So if I rune weaver here, the one -two punch. thank you. Something's wrong. Yes. How do we feel about leveling Riven and giving her the blade this turn? I think I'm into it. I can also just play chump wump. Nah, I'm a liar. I'm just gonna chump wump. I'm going to chump one bit ignition and then put some mushrooms in their deck. Yeah, that attack was weird. I mean, I guess they assumed I was going to force them to make that trade deck's turn. I mean, I was going to attack into the judgment anyways. I mean, they have, they have no mana. It wasn't a risky block. A risky attack. I'm playing Rune Weaver because it's a viewer submission, yeah. Can you perfection? <laughs> Better, 
better lucky than good. For, for the record, they had 15 mushrooms on 24 cards there. And we, we hit them for three. I don't know if the three really mattered, but... Yeah, they're, they're going to negative six here still. Didn't, didn't matter. And I, I had more damage from getting excited and stuff in hand. You know the list for the invoke deck? Yeah, you can find all the previous decks that I played up on my mobile Linux page here. The exclamation point decks in chat. Seems super reasonable. Getting to play the the rummage some treasure package inside of aggressively slanted shells to provide some good card selection always feels good. Good, good, cheap, efficient ways to provide a little bit of uh, card filtering in your deck that otherwise wants to be beating down. What do you think is the best home for Riven right now? Uh, we played Riven Ash to start the stream, and I think that's definitely the most competitive Riven deck I've played to date. I think that's probably going to be the highlight on my highlights channel tomorrow. It's the best way to get started in Rune Tira. I'm glad you asked. I have a short 10 minute video here that explains not only the best way to learn all of the game mechanics in Rune Tira, but it also explains how to start growing your collection and the best way to find and build decks when you're getting started. Teaches you, teaches you the basics, how to find things in the client. Yeah, if anybody's new to the game, it's a great watch too, if you're already playing a little bit. This is a great pickup here. Pairs with some treasure nicely again. Yep, yeah, and my, my video there is notably, it's not a how to play video. I'm not going to, that video doesn't teach you the basic mechanics of the game. It explains how to learn them and teach them to yourself. So even if you already know how to play, but you're not quite sure how to find decks and how to get your collection built up to start, it's a great video to watch. It's also, it's also a great video to send to friends if you have friends that you're interested in getting into the game but they're not quite sure how to dive in. You know, it could have been right, honestly, to open attack Seer into the powder keg. Yeah, I think I, think I should have opened into the powder keg there. Didn't, didn't matter if we'd have opened into the powder keg. They had a vial piece did it first. Yeah, yeah, the vault's great. The vault, the vault's, vault is good, good stuff. Good stuff. Get Riven down here so she can start reforging when we gain attack tokens. You want to trade as often as possible when you're playing against Go Hard because eventually they're going to just kill your board with a pack your bag. So keeping their board small and your board small at the same time is good. I think I'm supposed to open on this. Because this means Riven doesn't die to a go hard. Still dies to a vile feast, obviously, or grasp, sure. But notably does not die to go hard if I open on this attack. Fine. 
I think I'm just holding on to these for now and banking spell mana. I'm not burning my card next turn yet. Perfect. That's exactly why we hold on to them, so we can turn them into real cards or something like a rummage. If we can find a copy of Might, we might get set up to, like, pseudo-combo them next turn with the, uh, the Vi plus the Whirling Death. Huh? I think I'm into getting a Nyandroid here. Pray to stock. I'm always up for a round or two. How's Ribbon been for you? Ribbon's a very reasonable card. This is our second Riven deck of the day, and she's been fighting both of them. They have another Gohard, they get to kill this, but Gohard was going to kill this anyway, so it's kind of whatever. Oh, I do have Overwhelm for Vi. Nice. Vengeance? Go hard, sure. I suppose they could still have Vengeance here. The three releases. I think I think Zoe's Zoe's likely the best champion out of uh, out of the ones we've seen played so far. Well, that means no vengeance. That's exciting. Vi, Vi no longer dies to pack here, although notably they've only played two go hard so far, so just a little bit off of that, hopefully. They're going to look to get set up with the good open attacks next turn. I know what lurks in the shadow. I'm actually going to go ahead and deploy Runeweaver to start here, because I'd rather block this than with this, because I want this to not die to a deal five. In a in a perfect world. Again, trade early, trade often here. This could draw a smite. Flesh was weak, but look at me now. Be nothing left when I'm done. 
<laughs> so this play means that Vi could die to a deal one, which is not ideal. So I think I think that means I need to go ahead and attack here. The board, the board getting fully traded off here is definitely much better for my opponent than it is for me. A tribute to the spider God. Oh, you know what? So I, I messed that up, right? I should have whirling death off of my 5-3 to play around Vile Feast there explicitly. I couldn't whirling the keg. The keg wasn't in combat. So whirling the keg was not a legal play. We've got Vi plus Overwhelm next turn. To dodge a Vengeance, we could dodge Ball. I guess we technically have to dodge Ruination too. scary I don't think we can beat ruination I think we're just doing this into blade and hoping they don't have it yeah the on the on board's great yeah they tossed a vengeance earlier ben uh vengeance is maybe beatable probably not I think we just have to hope they don't have a way to kill this cards well that beats ruination right They often play two to three copies, two or up to three copies of Vengeance, though, so that could be that could be something we realistically see happen here. Yep. Now, the upside to this sequence that happened is my opponent at the very least um did not uh we get to keep our blade of exile, which is meaningful. That's nice. I, ac I actually think with this blade, I'd rather get Ballistic Bot here than Nyandroid. Because the, the ignitions from this are better with some treasures and rummages that we could draw. I mean, your dogs are definitely the exception to that role, ABX. The, the average is that animals tend to be afraid of very loud, loud noises like fireworks. Sure, but it's just like it doesn't really add value to the discussion. And it also, it also comes off as pretty uh, get good or get better animals type thing. Type comment.
Eron, too big to fail. Thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. And the problem with having to make this block is now we, we lose this to another Gohard. So we're probably dead at this point. Their deck, their deck is mostly Gohards. I guess I guess that leaves us a one one at least. Fat butter, thank you for the thirteen months of prime. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Good morning. Yeah, yeah. Your your fire your animals are the average. She toots. That'll do, pig. <laughs> so close game. Had a lethal attack. If we could have faded a vengeance there. Pretty good back and forth overall, though. A eh? Mulligan B is gonna keep ballistic bot. Basically always keep Fi in the opener. Wanna get enabling her. That's a stuck Ben. Okay so far. Nice charging up champ. I think I take this train. I just take the hit. Hey, I'm glad you found it. I'm glad you found it useful, Sorakes. Yeah. is not terrible especially if they have an ash here no ash we just play a ribbon of our own Fi Fi is pretty awkward against the frostbite deck Must have they must have brittle steel, right? That's a reason to want to mark toughness down on this. You know, honestly, there's a good chance they're just frostbiting us this turn, anyways. I guess this makes them have exactly flash freeze. I think I'm supposed to try and kill this before they can uh, get their get her leveled up. If they have flash freeze here, that's fine. This this doesn't die inside of this combat, and it gets a freeze out of them. Makes our second one more likely to work, and getting getting freezes out of their hand makes whirling death potentially better down the line. We've got a bunch of those at the moment. This is definitely not a great card to draw in this matchup. Yeah, yeah, Vi is tough to start. Vi is again down to two toughness here now, so thinking about things that we need to be playing around, um, Brittle Steel gets added to the list.
that's a good observation. They haven't played any any Omenhawk cards yet, so either spells or more expensive things. You get things like Captain Pharaon rotting in their hand. Not seeing units immediately is indicative of uh, one of those two things, right? Frostbite and Vulnerable. Uh, sure. feel like these whirling deaths are pretty unlikely to do much in this game this matchup anyway so i'm gonna try and kill their kill their thing here i guess this is real bad against troll chant because they get to wipe the attack off my vi and give their thing seven toughness but i feel like i gotta pick a point and try and play to the board more here all right there's the first omen hawk thing That just worked. Everything everything turned out much better than expected. I can't I can't believe that just worked. They must have like Captain Barons and stuff in their hand, right? Like trying to think like what Heart and blade. Another ribbon? Sure. Well I guess they have they have blade fragments still. So some of these can be blade fragments. That's not terrible. This gives us a copy of this, which lets us loot this. And the trigger's that. Lovely. Hollow 27, thanks for the follow. Good afternoon. That's interesting. Okay, so they want to make they want to make her difficult to kill. That makes sense, I suppose. Don't brittle steal me. That's the one thing I explicitly asked you not to do, opponent. So this gives Overwhelm, and then we level this up. So make their last card be Harsh Winds. They freeze one of our things, that's not a big deal. If they freeze both, we get into trouble. This is lethal, yep. 
Yeah, Riven, Riven with Bai, this is, um, Riven with Bai has probably been the best Riven spelt in terms of, like, this, this deck has felt like the best Riven deck I've played in that, not that it's the most competitive deck that plays Riven, but it's the most competitive deck that really feels like it leans on Riven synergies well. Vi, Vi getting Overwhelm is such a, such a solid upgrade for her. All right, they who endure aggro. I think I'm full mulliganing looking for Vi. This is a matchup where we're basically racing, so trying to set up our pseudo combo with Vi sounds good. Yeah, they're good. They're good with augment too, which is also something we're getting to do here. I'm not sold on these calculated creations. I guess I guess these are like they don't let you play five ballistic bots. This is the way we play five ballistic bots, but this card's been a little whelming so far. Condor, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Brummage is a decent pickup. We've got bot and this to generate extra cards. We don't mind looting through. Yeah, yeah, giving giving by quick attack has also been good. Less so for pushing damage, more so for controlling the board, but still, still very reasonable. Did it move? This also pairs well with bot. Once bot gives us discard fodder. Honestly, with this rummage in hand, talking about calculated creations and not being able to play to play five bots, this might be bot this turn into calculated creation second bot next turn. Hey, Wolfwood, thank you for the 26 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yeah, I could definitely see this just being worse than than iterative improvement. Are we are we on three iteratives in this list? Let me take a peek. I forget. We are we are on three iterative improvements. Yeah, I'm definitely definitely happy with that. Being able to randomly have Nyandroid on occasion does seem good. So I definitely want to clap Kalista here, I think. We're gonna take a bit of a hit from the rest of this though. I'm gonna take seven down to 12. This is gonna die to this. I'm gonna take eight down to 11. don't have time to play this at this point right so i'm just gonna rummage through it see what we end up with house spider's decent Can you perfection? yeah i think i think there's a chance that the the calculated creations could just be actual copies of nyandroid like obviously we made a bot here with one of them but i think that's more the exception than the rule I think we probably want to play Runeweaver this turn, so we have a three power thing to block the abominable, the abomination profitably. And the question becomes, do I want to spend this mana on an ignition this turn or bank it for spell mana? That's brutal. This card really needs to be a three, two. This card, this card's been like somewhat passable in this set, but it's still really not been good. I think we definitely want to play Riven this turn so we can start forging the blade with her. Yeah, 
yeah yeah the difference and like i honestly wouldn't be surprised if we see that change happen in their next big balance patch like remember remember goat was originally a 3-1 and didn't see any play and they adjusted that one uh we've not forged it all yet man why did they not do that pre-combat they were afraid of letting me develop i guess i'm really glad they decided to wait till post to do this this play post combat means we're about to get endured though which probably means we're dead how long was go to three one not long it was one of the one of the first first balance patches afterwards after it released Well, the problem is, if I iterative it, it counts my things that have died, and I've definitely had less things die than they have. What if I... There's still much to answer for. Iterative this... And then play this, and then play ignition. And then if they open attacks next turn, I can double mushroom cloud, double whirling death to kill this off a of five power bot. Obviously we're dead to atrocity, but don't play around cards you can't beat. Well, shit. That'll do, pig. That'll do. <sighs> you cannot break what is already broken. It isn't. It isn't an atrocity. It was a different, different top end bomb we couldn't deal with. Double, double Enduron Curve. Couldn't I make bot a 10-3? Well, they had two Endures, Time Lord. Did we make bot a 10-3? It was a three attack. I could double Mushroom. A two attack from a Blade is eight... No, I don't I don't think so. I would have I would have needed priority to play both ignitions, which I didn't have time for. Darius Sajani. So overwhelm aggro. Keep this 2-3, I think. Mulligan the uh the aftershock's a little slow here. They're unison to be pretty beefy too. Or cheap, and I don't want to play into them like that. All right, I think we play Rune Weaver out as a blocker to start. Yeah, I think Battle Fury is sweet and they who endure. It's basically it's basically like playing more copies of endure. It like turns target unit into an endure in a pinch. Let you push extra damage. Triple one drop starts real aggressive. No play there is theoretically good for us, except for the fact that our opponent is working up towards a copy of uh, Battle Fury, most likely. Yikes. Okay. Let's 
So we can might one of our units and then whirling death into here. I'm going to start with this and see what they do. Oh, Battle Battle Fury still beats us though then, right? Because it's going to be nine. Feels, feels like a dented Battle Fury moment. All right, that's not Battle Fury. Huh. Do I want to trade Riven for Death's Hand plus this? I think so. I think the play here actually is preserve my life a little extra. And I'm going to might this plus whirling death into, into here. Maybe, maybe that's wrong. Maybe I'm supposed to set up to try and kill them with Vi next turn. I could, I could just let this happen and then drop Vi and then have might whirling death next turn. Maybe that's better. We get decisive maneuvered out of this game. Sure. Yeah, uh, burn, burn spell hitting my unit instead of my dome there feels like a win for us. So Vi plus blade, glinting blade fragment levels her next turn, which is nice. my way it's her way or the highway chat So this means I'm forging the Blade of Exile next turn. Actually, I could I could technically forge it right now, huh? I'm gonna play the bot. Meat bags. Meat bags. We saw Noxie and Fervor out of them, which is a little scary. I don't know that I'm playing around that, though. I have 10 mana all together here. I kind of want to just play this other bot to start pumping its attack up. And we'll go, like, Blade Fragment, Blade Fragment on this, and then the big blade on her... Ignition to start and see what they do. Okay, just on, uh, just on a bunch of stuff, huh? That's a knockout. Thoughts on on this one? I kind of liked what this deck was doing. Um, I mentioned at one point during the set, but this felt like the best Riven deck that we've played in that the Reforge card specifically felt good with Vi in, in basically every way. Like, all all three of these Blade Fragments are good with Vi in different situations. Like, Quick Attack lets her kill larger units. 
Overwhelm lets her kill smaller units and still punch through for damage. And giving plus two attack for one mana at burst speed helps Vi kind of level up out of unexpected situations or spots where she wouldn't otherwise be able to get. Um, the Rummage Sump Dredger package paired with things like uh, Ballistic Bot and Chump Wump for extra created cards to filter through felt really good and allow us to kind of execute our game plan very consistently. Yeah, Rune, Rune Weaver felt fine. I really wish that this card would get a second a second point of toughness, but at a at a base level, because the blade fragments were so good with Vi consistently, Rune Weaver definitely felt more playable here than it has in any other shell that I've played. Zombie Lunch, thanks for the follow. I feel like the one kind of standout card as that like I wasn't really impressed with and was never excited to draw was uh calculated creations here. I feel like I would I would be I would much rather just play Niandroid with this card rather than getting a five mana Niandroid in a lot of situations. Um iterative improvement notably was very good as well in that set this was extra copies of bot it was extra copies of some treasure you can pick up and copy your opponent's things in a pinch and this also notably makes the thing you're copying plus one plus one larger which is a relevant stat increase in a lot of situations so i don't know what exactly i would do with those two copies of created something um honestly i could even see just like a discard payoff like jury rig being fine with both rummage and uh and some treasure being things that we're playing it could also just be niandroid as another evasive thing to uh to kill people with uh chempunk pickpocket sure i could see that being fine i think a uh, third point of power on two drops is like a really important uh stat increase being able to block fearsome things on your two drum drop and chempunk notably does create cards if it gets through to hitting our opponent and giving this quick attack or overwhelm as jotra noticed in chat noted in chat is also very reasonable with this card because they can't just chump block it with something small they need to put at least three defense in front of this in order to uh in order to deny it from getting something out of the opponent's deck All right. Uh, at any rate, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap on Rune Terra stuff for the day. Thanks to everybody that hung out through the end. If you're a new viewer like Zombie Lunch there, be sure to check out my YouTube channels as well. I have two of them. The first one, the Hoaglandia Highlights channel, posts a new deck highlight every single day of the week. I play three to four, sometimes even five decks every day on stream. So if you want to find the best of the best and the sweetest and most competitive decks that I've played on stream, the Highlights channel is a great place to do that. I also have youtube.com forward slash Jeff Hoagland absolutely everything i stream gets uploaded so all of those decks that i stream every day get cut up deck by deck and put on the jeff hoagland channel uh, i'm not going to sign off for the day i also do some uh some variety stuff so i'm currently uh most of the way through a playthrough of the final fantasy 7 remake so i'm going to go ahead and swap over to play in that for the rest of the afternoon